Hi folks! These flying saucers, or ionocraft, are a small part of some work I did in the mid-1990s as part of my non-conventional propulsion research. But I didn't have a video camera or as much knowledge back then, so I thought I'd film it now and share it with you. Here's how the ionocraft are made. I start by cutting two discs out of some lightweight and not too thick balsa wood. I file the edges to give them a nice taper all around. I next wrap them in aluminum foil, being careful not to have any sharp edges exposed. I finish it off with aluminum tape, which you can buy from hardware stores. I then cut some straws like this. I'm using these straws because they're plastic, and plastic is not electrically conductive. I hot glue them to the disc, taking care to see that they're parallel to each other. I then cut some shorter pieces, and slit them lengthwise. That's so that I can slip them over the longer straws attached to the discs. Next, I hot glue some thick copper wire to those shorter straw pieces. I use thick wire for its rigidity. I'll need to make electrical contact with the thick wires, so I solder some other wire to the edge facing away from the discs. To make electrical contact with the discs, I tape some wire to the side of the disc opposite the thick wire. And lastly, I roughly find the center of gravity of the ionocraft and tape some string to the top, around that center of gravity. The test rig is all non-conductive plastic and laminated wood. All the wiring is very well insulated, since I want all the ionization happening at the ionocraft. Think of it as pumping water. You don't want any leaks in your hoses and piping, since that'll mean less water at the end. And now for the rotor. At the bottom of the rotor is the uninsulated point of a screw, and this is a Robertson screw head with the hole here also uninsulated. That way they can make electrical contact with each other. But notice everywhere else is well insulated. Once inside, the rotor will spin freely in the hole though. And the same is done here at the top of the rotor. And finally to mount the Inocraft to the rotor. I start by tying the loose ends of the string to the rotor. And then I use wires with alligator clips to electrically connect the top wires to the Inocraft's thick wires. And yes, they're not well insulated, but as you'll see, I get away with it this time. I then do the same for the bottom wires, which I attach to the discs. I bring out my homemade high voltage power supply. I connect the top wires to the high voltage positive output of the power supply. And then the bottom wires to earth ground. I bring out my Variac and make the final connections. Time to have some fun. Since I've done all this before, it works great on the first try. I turn out the lights and you can see plenty of purplish glow. That's called Corona. To see it better, I put a plastic mug in the way of the rotor to prevent it from moving. I turn it on again, and now you can see that the Corona is coming from the sharpish ends of the thick wire and goes to the nearest edge of the disc. It's that Corona that's the source of the ion wind that propels these ionocrafts. And it's possible to see where that ion wind is going. Here I'm doing what's called a smoke test using an incense stick. The air is clearly moving in the opposite direction that the ionocraft would be, if it weren't prevented from moving, that is. And lastly, here are some voltage and current measurements. This one will show voltage, this one will show the current, and this is the high voltage probe. I turn it on and touch the probe to the power supply's output ball. The voltage is around 2500 volts DC. The current seems to hover around 250 microamps. That current is the result of the stream of ions going between the ends of the thick wire and the edge of the disc. The power supply is trying to raise the voltage higher, but the corona is really a short circuit, preventing the voltage from going higher. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more videos like this. That includes one where I show how to make a lifter, a more commonly known type of ionocraft. Another going step by step through how to make the homemade power supply I used. And for an easier type of propulsion that anyone can do, one on how to make water bottle rockets, including the science behind how they work. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, leave a question, or comment below. See you soon!